Meine Damen und Herren, wir freuen uns sehr, heute hier zu sein. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to be here today. Thank you. And we're even more excited to introduce to you Mayo. Mayo is a new way to connect computers and us as people, a new way to merge the real and digital worlds. So with that, please meet Mayo. So what you're seeing on screen here is a live feed of Aaron's hand. Each action that he does is translated by the Mayo into the on-screen gesture visualizer. There are no cameras, no keyboards, and no mice involved, just his hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> Go ahead. Switch to the next slide. A little Wi-Fi problems, I think, but please. <laughs> It almost seems like magic. <laughs> <laughs> the Mayo is able to detect the tiny electrical activations that his muscles produce in his forearm, and using machine intelligence, correlate this to the gestures that are being displayed on the screen. But the Mayo can do more than just detect gestures. It contains an amazing motion control unit, which can sense every movement, flick, or twist of his arm, and translate that and transmit that into the digital world. Now we've actually integrated the motion of Aaron's arms into the on-stage lighting control system. So if you guys notice these blue spotlights that just came out onto the crowd, those are actually being controlled by Aaron's arm currently in real time. So as, he's mo as he moves his hands to the right or to the left, the spotlights are following the motions. They're cool, yeah? <laughs> So why did we build this? Now, we had done some work in this area of wearable technology before. Actually, not too far from here. Matt and I were studying at a place called the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, or ETH Zurich. And at ETH Zurich, we worked on a project we called EV. Now, EV was a way for the visually impaired to help navigate in public, or help them navigate. It was a belt-worn device, and it had a little laser scanner in it and the scanner would pick up obstacles, things like walls, curbs, stairs, whatever it may be, and translate that information that we would perceive visually into tactile sensations that the user could feel. So instead of seeing with their eyes, they could feel the images in front of them. And this got us really interested in this idea of if we could help those who are disabled regain parts of their abilities, what could wearable technology do for the rest of us? Could it let us do new things, enhance, or improve our abilities or let us achieve things we couldn't do before. And so with that, we did a bunch of research in this area and found that while the output side of things, the displays, the glass in Google Glass, if you like, had been well researched, there wasn't a good interface or input side to that. So we wanted to develop a better way to interact with this next generation of computers. And the gold standard right now is voice control. So you've probably seen you know, the Bluetooth headsets of the 90s. But do you want to be the crazy guy in the corner of the subway talking to your funny set of glasses? And our opinion was that wouldn't work for the social reasons, but also for the fidelity reasons. It's really hard to relay spatial information over voice. So we said, why not use our hands? We use our hands to interact with everything else in the world. We've evolved to do that. And so could we plug our hands into the digital world? And so we set out to do that. But how? We didn't want to have gloves on. We, we couldn't have cameras following us out in the world and away from the computer screen. So we needed a better way to plug those hands in the digital world. And now, we had done some work years ago in a field of biomedical engineering um, using something called electromyography, or EMG. And so EMG is the scientific word that means the study of the electrical activity of muscles. And we wondered, could we take those tiny electrical signals that your muscles generate when they're activated and actually detect those and recognize the movements of your hands and fingers from those signals. And it turns out that you can. So I'd like to show you a bit more about this EMG technology and how we use it in the Mayo. So this is actually pretty cool stuff. What you're seeing here on the screen is a live feed of the electrical signals coming from the muscles in my forearm. So when I do something like move my hand to the left, you see a certain set of signals 
changing. And when I do something different, like go to the right, you can see a different pattern appearing there. Now, these signals are incredibly small, on the order of 5,000 times smaller than, say, the voltage from the battery in your cell phone. And so, in order to detect them, we need some pretty advanced sensor technology. And that, in order to build the Mayo, we had to develop that sensor technology ourselves because it just did not exist before. The sensors used in a clinical setting are typically disposable,、um, like gel based electrodes that you, you have to actually shave your arm and then stick them on, and just a messy thing. You don't want to be doing that on a day to day basis if you're going to be using this product. So, we spent a year and a half developing a brand new sensor technology, which we call the Thalmic Non Contact Muscle Activity Sensor. And boy, have we patented it. Now, this technology enables us to detect these signals. And as you're seeing, we, we get this output of the eight sensors around the band, and we can use those, feed those into some machine learning algorithms that detect what gesture you're doing at any time with your hand. And it's pretty easy to see visually when I go left or right the different patterns of signals that appear. But our algorithms can take this a step further and detect very subtle changes in order to enable us to detect a much wider variety of hand poses. Now, I'd like to show you, give you a quick, a quick glimpse into a very important part in the history of the Mayo development. And this was about a month or two into the development of our very first prototype. Had, it, was, it was a pretty ugly thing, wires hanging off the arm, plugged into a, a USB port. But we were actually able to get this up and running for the first time and control a PowerPoint presentation、uh, using kind of a right gesture and a left gesture and go next slide and previous slide.、Uh, so I'd like to give you a glimpse into that right now. So we've got Aaron here demonstrating very simple gestures to control Microsoft PowerPoint. s w i n g his hand to the right to advance the slides, hand to the left to move back through the slides. And right now he's wired directly through USB in our interface board.、Um, Just with our initial proof of concept prototype. But you can see here that he so far has not had a single、uh, misrecognized gesture or error in this session. He's got 100%, yeah, 100%、um, recognition, and that's just with a simple two channel system right now. <laughs> We've come a long way from that initial prototype. This on the screen is what Mayo looks like today. It combines our muscle activity sensors, motion tracking, and haptic feedback into a sleek device that you wear on your forearm. And we've really designed this to blur the lines between, human, between the real and the digital worlds. There are a ton of applications for Mayo. There's a reason why each and every single one of you in the audience should be using it. <clears throat> There are obvious use cases for it, like gaming, giving business presentations, or controlling your media. But in this next video clip, I want to highlight a different use case. Now, I think helicopters are pretty badass. We decided to integrate Mayo with a Parrot AR drone. Check it out. One of the biggest challenges in creating a new user interface is figuring out text entry. Now, if any of you guys have ever used the Apple TV and you've tried to input your, your password for your email using their clicker device, you know what I mean. So, we set out to hack together a motion based keyboard entry device, kind of like the swipe keyboard that you guys use in your Android phones. So, in this next clip, I'd like to highlight one of our amazing co op students who was able to hack this together in just one morning. As you can see, Idris just has to rotate his hand slightly to the left or right to change the cursor position. Then he can select a letter by just hovering over it for a short period of time. 
when he has the correct word selected, he can just lightly snap, and the Maya will pick up the gesture and tell Minyum to enter the word. Um, so he's just going to complete his sentence now. The text input is pretty intuitive. He doesn't really have to move his arm into an awkward place. And if he just wants to select different words in the submenu, he just flicks left and right. Uh, he can also delete words by raising his arm. And that's it. That's the Minium keyboard working with the Maya. And so I'd like to stress that that very early proof of concept, but the interesting thing was that was hacked together in a morning using 10 lines of code. So we've really strived to develop what we call Mayo API, which is a set of APIs available for multiple platforms that connects the Mayo device to all kinds of different applications and lets developers build it in to whatever they can dream of. And so we've made it a core focus of us internally to make it as easy as possible for developers to integrate Mayo. We currently have APIs available on Windows, Mac, Android, and iOS. And we've open sourced the SDK. And we have developers working on integrations on platforms like ROS, the robot operating system we heard about yesterday to control robots, or on Unity for game developers. And the interesting thing for developers is that we've had consumers in 148 different countries now pre-order Mayo, 148 countries. And that means there's a group of people all over with a very diverse set of applications, use cases, and things that they want to do with Mayo. And so whatever you can dream of, there's somebody out there that I'm sure wants to use your application or idea. And so we're trying to bring together those people and the developers with the ideas and the imagination to create these. And so we get feedback from developers to make it easier and easier to develop on Mayo in a couple ways. The first one is we bring in local developers right in our office every week, and we give them kind of the latest and greatest, the beta SDKs, documentation, examples, and so on. And we get their feedback on it and say, what would you change? What wasn't clear? How could it be better for you to develop on? The second way we do that is by running events called hackathons. And so last month, we had the opportunity to run a very cool event in conjunction with Google and students from the University of Waterloo. And so we took a group of undergraduate university students, brought them in 7 o'clock PM on a Friday night, and gave them Mayo developer kits and said, you have 12 hours, see what you come up with. And I think the coolest part was just seeing the excitement, the ingenuity, the creativity of these students as they thought of new ideas, new ways to use this. And um, I'd like to share kind of that experience and um, some of those moments with you now. a new mouse, a new and better mouse with the Mayo armband. You have the Mayo and you're doing some exercise, it will save that to it like a JSON file. Uh, we can actually predict tremors in the measurements. Calculate average angular velocity maybe. Developers are doing all sorts of cool and awesome and innovative things with the Mayo. And probably the coolest part for us is that you know, we think about ways to use the technology and applications for it almost every day. But we're continually getting new suggestions and ideas from developers for you know, ways to use it and, and things that we've never even thought of before. Um, so, so that's really cool. But even more exciting to us is what comes in the future. Because we built Mayo to enable new ways to interact with technology. As we move, you know, as wearable devices and these new technologies become more, part, more a part of our daily lives, we're going to need new ways to interact with them that aren't based on mice, keyboards, or touch screens. I mean, many of these new devices that are coming out now don't even have screens at all. And so the reason we built Mayo is to enable a new paradigm to enable us to interact with these devices in ways that you know, were previously clumsy or not even really possible at all. And so I think 
the most interesting question is, especially you know, with this audience of pioneers here, is where does the Mayo go next? And what can you do with it? Where can you take it? And how can, how can you use it to build the future, give us new abilities, and allow us to have new experiences? So, pioneers, uh, I'd like you to, for a second, imagine a new technological future. One where we're not bound or tied to these devices we use, where these devices kind of merge with us as humans and that line is blurred between us and technology. Perhaps one where we actually take control of the digital world rather than vice versa. And so, as we watch one last video clip here showing some of the current use cases of Mayo today, I'd like to see perhaps you know, what you can dream up for down the road are the future use cases. So here we go. So, thank you very much. Die Zukunft beginnt jetzt. Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you. Goodbye.